Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Review Ron, and today we're going to be talking about some more Deep Rock Galactic. Now, I've been wanting to make this video for a little while, but I didn't know exactly what to title it or anything. This is arguably one of the easiest builds that I've ever used in Deep Rock Galactic, and I wanted to share it with you guys. This does require some overclocks, and it does require playing a specific class, but I might do these for other classes too, if you guys enjoy this one. This is my kind of... Um, no brain gunner build. The reason why I call it that is because it really does not require you to think a whole lot during a fight. So I've been using this quite a while. There's going to be footage in the background playing that is just of me playing this build and it is quite strong both in multiplayer and in solo. I use this exact build. Well, not this exact build. I had one thing changed about it when I did um, the solo elite deep dive that I recently put up on the channel. You, you guys can check that out too. I put it up a few days ago and uh, it went surprisingly well. So this uses the Thunderhead Heavy Auto Cannon as the primary weapon, and this does use the Neurotoxin Payload. What Neurotoxin Payload does is it inflicts poison damage or it has a chance of inflicting poison damage to enemies nearby. And this also gives you a larger AoE, but it lowers your damage output. Now this lowers your base damage as well as your area damage. Like I said, the poison does have a chance of starting, but it's I think a 50% chance per shot to um, inflict poison on an enemy. Poison will do damage over time as well as slow down the enemies and you can visually see them being poisoned uh, with this orange cloud around them. Now this is a overclock that I don't see being used a whole lot and people have told me that they don't see it being used a whole lot in any of my live streams. Most of the time people are running Big Bertha or Carpet Bomber which both of those are really good too but I really enjoy the Neurotoxin Payload because it's surprisingly consistent. And I think it's because the auto cannon can do splash damage. So you have a 50% chance of spreading poison, but you have a 50% chance on everything that you hit. So you have multiple chances to spread poison and to really weaken crowds. This slows down crowds. This does damage over time to crowds. This completely negates um, the regenerative bugs ability because they can't regenerate while they're taking damage over time. Let me go over the build and what I've been running on it. I really haven't changed this a whole lot since I've been running it because I found that it works so well. In tier one, I'm running expanded ammo bags. I pretty much always take expanded ammo bags here on the level one or the tier one modifications for the auto cannon because it just gives you so much value. You just get 220, I believe. Yeah, 220 extra rounds, which is a lot of extra ammo. For tier two, I'm running lighter barrel assembly. This is to reach the max rate of fire faster. This is just so I can splash poison quicker. Although in tier two, I found that pretty much all of these work fairly well. In tier three, I've been using uh, loaded rounds. This just gives us more splash damage by two, uh, but you could go with higher velocity rounds. I've used that one quite a bit and they feel pretty much the same. Tier four, just trap mill rounds where we get uh, even more splash radius because we're just trying to splash poison to as many enemies as possible. And then in tier five, I've been running suppressive fire and I've really liked this one. This has a chance to scare off any enemies with bullets uh, just impacting near them or hitting them directly. This is really useful if you want to push back things like Praetorians. It makes it so that they're usually turning away so anybody on your team can just fire at their weak spot very easily. For the secondary weapon, I was using the Bulldog Heavy Revolver using the Magic Bullets overclock. And this overclock is also very forgiving because you don't need to hit enemies directly. You're actually encouraged to not hit enemies directly. You want to hit near an enemy or near a group of enemies to inflict splash damage and also inflict poison. So this can inflict poison the same way that the auto cannon can. And this just really benefits from how quickly can you flick to enemies and just shoot in their general direction. You don't have to be all that accurate. You just kind of have to be a little bit fast if you want to be uh, really efficient with the revolver. Even if you're not that fast, it's still really effective to be using this revolver. Now this build's a bit different because we're building specifically for magic bullets. And magic bullets makes it so our bullets ricochet off nearby surfaces towards enemies. We also get more ammunition, but we significantly reduce our damage. And this is, uh, when it says significant, it does mean significant, but we're getting ammo and we're getting just the ability to not need to aim. For tier 1s, I usually go with the quick fire ejector just so that I can reload this weapon faster because I usually run this build with uh, Born Ready. I'm not ever interested in reloading the auto cannon. I want to reload the auto cannon manually as least as possible. Um, I do want to reload the revolver because that's going to be what I switch to and fire at enemies with uh, while well, my auto cannon is reloading. So having a faster reload is pretty nice. You know, increased accuracy doesn't really matter in this build because we just gotta hit close to the enemies. In tier two, we just go with more ammo because this is just gonna be a status affecting build. So there's no point in going for more damage 
recoil and spread per shot also doesn't matter. Like I said, we just have to get close to enemies. And tier three, we're gonna go with explosive rounds. This makes it so uh, your bullets pretty much explode on impact. Um, and since our bullets are ricocheting, as well as we're just trying to get close to enemies to trigger this, this makes the most sense. We just wanna splash uh, damage to as many enemies as possible or just splash damage to one enemy in particular. Expanded ammo bags in tier four, once again, just for extra ammo and then neurotoxin coating in tier five so that we can splash poison on enemies. So with this whole build, we have a lot of bullets. We get a lot back from resupplies. We do not really need to aim all that much. We just need to hit near enemies and it will splash damage onto them. So we're gonna be doing a lot of damage over time to a lot of enemies, which is both good for a solo uh, as well as good for multiplayer. In multiplayer, it helps to slow down all the enemies so that your team can more easily deal with them. In solo, it also slows down all enemies so that you can deal with them easier as well as you can just wait for the poison to kill a lot of the enemies. Now for grenades, you can honestly pick any of the grenades. They all work decently well with this build. You could go with incinerary grenades if you want to do more damage over time. You could go with sticky grenades like I usually do. This is better for fighting things like Praetorians because you can throw it directly on them and they will run away in fear of the grenade and it will do the most amount of single target damage. So you also just get the most amount of these, so that's why I usually take them. The cluster bombs can also be really good because they can clear up crowds of enemies too. So any of the grenades are pretty good. I just like sticking with the sticky grenades the most simply because they inflict the most single target damage and this build is not the strongest against single targets. It's stronger against crowds. It works okay against single targets. Now against dreadnoughts, this build is not super great. Uh, it's not bad, but it's not as good as some other gunner builds that you could go with. It's not going to be like the Leadstorm minigun or the Big Bertha uh, auto cannon. What this build does allow you to do is no matter who the Dreadnought is targeting or Dreadnoughts are targeting, depending on which Dreadnought you got, you can just constantly shoot at them from any angle. It doesn't matter if you're hitting their weak spot or not. Since you have so much splash damage and ricochets from the uh, revolver as well as the auto cannon, you will be doing steady damage over time to them. So you can still fight dreadnoughts with this build. It's just, it's going to take a little bit longer than it otherwise would. But this build is really hard to beat in terms of uh, crowd damage per second. For the other equipment that we're running, uh, honestly, you can run whatever you want on your shield generator, whatever you find the most useful. So whether you want recharge time, uh, this is usually what I run on mine, which is uh, a larger area and then the shield lasts longer and the shield lasts longer. For the zipline launcher, I'm just going with longer um, distance as well as faster speed. Once again, this is personal preference though. You could go with any of these. They're all pretty good. For my armor rig, I am running the uh, pretty much what I usually run on the higher difficulties. If I'm playing this on a lower difficulty, and when I say higher difficulties, I'm usually talking about hazard four or hazard five. I almost always run this build. If I'm playing on lower difficulties, Hazard 2, Hazard 3, I might change it up a little bit. And then for my pickaxe, which I usually don't talk about because all my pickaxe builds are pretty much the same, I go with the power attack because it's your only option. And then the better weight balance just so I can use power attacks more often. And then for perks with this build, uh, honestly, you can switch these in and out. The ones that I would recommend are uh, Born Ready and Filled Medic if you're playing multiplayer. Dash is also highly recommended with this build. But uh, Born Ready, I would say, is the only like must have for this build to work at its maximum efficiency. So this just makes it so unequipped weapons automatically reload after five seconds. This also goes for your zipline launcher. It's the same way for a uh, platform gun or the flare gun. So the way that this works is I use the auto cannon pretty much until it's empty or nearly empty and then switch over to the revolver, keep shooting that until I hear a sound cue for born ready to trigger. So then my auto cannon is reloaded and I switch back to it. This also makes it so I don't have to worry about my zipline ever being out of ammo too. So I would highly recommend this one. For a second perk, I'm running second wind. This is just to get uh, more movement speed when you're running around. This is kind of useful just for running through caves. It's kind of useful for running away from hordes. Uh, it synergizes very well with dash because you likely can dash away. And then if you just keep running, you'll get the second wind and you'll get even more room. For other passive perks, you could pick really whatever you want. I find that this one, second wind is pretty good, but sweet tooth is also pretty strong. Uh, strong arm can be pretty good with this one. Unstoppable might be good depending on the area. Resupplier might be good depending on the area. Veteran depositor might be good depending on if you like to sit next to Molly. This build doesn't really need friendly because you're likely not going to be doing that much friendly fire damage and thorns isn't necessary either because you're just going to be hitting in such an AOE that you'll do enough damage anyway. 
This build can kind of make use of Vampire because you will slow enemies down, so if you only want to use it for power attacks, you can. For my other passive perk, I picked Elemental Insulation just because it's a pretty solid perk all the way around and gives you uh, some resistance towards elemental damage. For active perks, like I said, I usually run dash with this build just so if enemies do start getting on top of me, I can get away from them. And since I'm also running second wind, I can likely keep running away from them to where they can't catch up to me right away. So my shield might come back up again so I can fight them in the shield. If I'm playing multiplayer, I almost always take field medic though with gunner. Uh, gunner is one of the best people to be taking field medic with because you do have the shield. So you can uh, throw a shield on somebody, pick them up, or you can pick them up and then throw a shield down so that everybody can stand inside of it. Try this build out. Tell me what you thought about it. Uh, I find it really useful. I think it's one of Gunner's best overall builds, uh, just in terms of simplicity and in terms of just power. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe. That way you get notifications whenever I post any of these videos. I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.